Look, look, look at this, guys. Look at this. Check out all of those green giant arborvitae. This one is for all you green giant fans, all of you arborvitae lovers. Isn't that awesome? Whole bunch of them, all in little one gallon pots. We propagated those, I think, two years ago. Yeah, two years ago. Let's go look at the next progression. These were last year's cuttings. Look at them all rooted out. Look at that. Just beautiful. Beautiful little landscape plants. And I'm gonna pop these guys up in a one gallon pot. They're still dormant. It's the middle of April here. Still getting cold at night, dipping down almost freezing. And these guys are just about to start waking up. Look, it's in the hoop house so they don't bronze up too much, but you can still see those bronze tips there. That's pretty normal for cedars. These guys are a cedar cross. So they're all going in one gallon pots. And then, they're gonna look like these guys. Look at that. And here's what we're doing next. Right there. You see it? Let's go over there. Look at that, guys. A bigger tote. One and a half times as big. And there's a hundred of them. A hundred cuttings. All ready to go. Rooting hormone on them. All ready to stick. Look at that. Beautiful. This is how you root arborvitaes. This is how you root arborvitaes. Green giants, emerald greens, Leyland cypress. Or is it cypress? I always mix the two up. I can't remember if it's the island or the plant. There it is. You saw the whole progression. Two years. Two years in the making. All right, so I just went out and took 40 more cuttings. So let's go ahead and get these guys stuck in this big tote and see how they all fit. As you can see this does take a little bit of time but uh, I've probably been at this for less than five minutes now just getting these stuck probably a couple hours from start to finish taking all these cuttings out in the landscape to getting them whittled down into nice cuttings uh, getting the rooting hormone on them and then sticking them in this medium but a couple hours of work is definitely worth the thousands of dollars that you can save landscaping your property with these, creating a hedge or whatever you're trying to do. So there they all are and it looks like we've got a little extra room here on the end for some more. So I'm gonna head back out, take some more cuttings and see if we can just fill this right back up. All right, so here they are. I got 29 more cuttings and that filled it out. So you might be asking, why are these guys packed in so tightly? And really, you don't, it doesn't matter. They, they can be packed in even tighter than this. I could put in twice as many cuttings if I wanted to. And the whole purpose for this space with the medium in it is just to hold the cuttings up and give them something to root into. Because once these guys root, we're not going to mess with them. I'm going to come back and fertilize with a a slow release fertilizer that is just going to take care of them through the rest of summer and they'll root through the summer put on new growth like those other ones did that we took last year and then they'll go dormant in the winter once they're dormant those roots are strong hard tough roots then i can dump the whole thing out and just pull them all apart it's really not that big of a deal and so like i said i could put even more in here but this is enough for now 169 of them will do me just fine now in a sec here, we're gonna take these back over to the bottom heap, but first I wanna say, a lot of people ask me, how do you propagate uh, you know, pine trees or fir trees or cedar trees? And all I can say is, you know, I haven't tried to propagate every plant out there, but if I was gonna try and propagate any kind of a needled evergreen tree, I would do it this exact same way. I would put them in some 
uh, fine fur bark like this or any other inert material that drains well but holds some moisture, I would do this just before summertime in the early spring before everything starts waking up these are all still dormant it's still getting close to freezing at night here so whatever you know whenever that happens in your area just before they start waking up i take them all put them in the medium put them on bottom heat and we're going to put these guys on bottom heat for a couple weeks and let them build up callus then i take them off the weather's starting to warm up more and i just let these guys slowly start waking up into the rest of spring and into the summer in a couple months these guys will be shooting out new growth and i'll already have fertilizer on them and we'll have nice little plants that just stay right in this tote for the rest of summer All right, so there it sits on top of the bottom heat, 169 cuttings, and I've made a video about this before. I'm sure some of you guys are probably gonna wonder where do I get that? Go back through the archives on the channel, and that goes for anything. If you have a question, I might have made a video about it. Just go back through the channel, type my name in with what you're searching for, and something might pop up. But anyway, these guys are gonna be on the bottom heat here for about two weeks, and they're just it's gonna keep this rooting medium warm. It's just gonna gently warm that soil these guys have been dormant so now they're going to get exposed to some bottom heat here and it's going to really wake up those cells right at the base of the cuttings and they're going to start forming that callus and then we'll take them off after a few weeks two three weeks something like that and then we'll let them slowly start growing roots through the summer that's it now because they're on bottom heat you want to watch them carefully because the top of this bark and the bottom but the top especially can really start drying out as this stuff warms up we're inside the hoop house you don't need a hoop house to do this you could do this out on your back porch it doesn't matter but it's going to start warming up in here this will start evaporating the moisture on the top of that bark so i just watch it it's not a big deal if i see it start turning light brown and i see it start to lose some moisture i'll just fan over it with a sprinkler just moisten everything real good i don't mind if some of that water trickles down to the bottom there's already kind of a little bit extra water down there anyway it's going to slowly feed the rest of the soil and just soak up into there these guys are not all the way down to the bottom it's not a big deal but I'll just watch it carefully and make sure that this has what it needs to continue rooting. You don't want it sopping wet, you just want it moist. So I hope you guys enjoyed that little green giant update. Now I know some of you guys are wanting to see the green giants out on my landscape from that original video that I did, um, it's been like three or four years now, maybe three years, and I got them planted out on the front of my landscape. I will tell you, I want to do that video later in the summer because I want to see new growth get put onto those guys. They're just dormant right now, but some of them are up at the same height as me. So they're putting on some serious growth. Now, cedars don't grow real full near the top anyway, and these green giants are the same way. So they are kind of spindly looking until you get down to the base. But as they put on more growth, I think in the next five years, these things are really going to just start packing on the growth and the size. But I'll take you out there later in the summer when they get some growth on them, and we'll show you what they look like. Till then, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hit the like button, subscribe if you want to follow along. Have a fantastic week, and I'll see you in the next video. Adios.